scriptures. But here in this house, we celebrate God's word. And here on Celebration Sunday, what better way? Lift your word, lift it high. Let the Lord know that you're on his side, on his side, not your side, his side. And let's repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. There are many like it, many like but this one, this one is mine. I read from it. I, read from I it. believe in it. I do what it tells me to do. Come on, family. Let's eat. Go with me in your Bibles to Proverbs. That's the book of wisdom. Right after Psalm. I got it right the first time. Proverbs 18 and 21. Say amen if you're there. Hold on if you're not. Don't worry about it. I'm going to read it to you. It's going to be up on the screen. All right. So I'll read to you from Proverbs 18, 21 and Romans 1 and 16. So our team sorts it out. It says Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongues. Some of y'all know this one. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Oh, I love this text. I'm going to go back and break it down. And over in Romans 1 and 16, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, which is the good news. That's what we said about Apostle Terry earlier. And we pray that be your portion as well of Christ, the good news of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation, the saving power for everyone who believes for the Jew first and then also us, the Greek or the Gentile. Amen. Come on, family. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we're grateful and thankful. But this is the day in which you have made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. God, in the spirit of David, he said, when I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house. So we were glad to wake up this Sunday morning and come into your house. This space and this place that was set up for your grace. So, Lord, now as we settle into this moment, unto this uh, minute, dear Lord, that we would settle in to receive your message. So, God, we ask that you would speak to your servant, for we are indeed listening. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say amen. amen. And amen. amen. High five and neighbor. Go ahead and have your seats and tell them love like him. Amen. You may now have your seats in the presence of our life-changing king. As we're sorting out some things, don't worry about it. I got plenty to talk to you about as we get ready to go into it. My first slide is up there anyway. We're in our seven up series because this is our seventh year. And so God said we're going to talk about seven ups, which are going to help us to develop into the Lord's MVP in 2023. MVP in the world means most valuable player here in the kingdom, and especially Agape Church, it means uh, maturity, victory, and prosperity. Come on, say that with me. Maturity, victory, and prosperity in 2023. Y'all thought y'all were just going to go ahead and hit the, the snooze button on the alarm and just go ahead and start your world, your, your hibernation this, this fall and this winter. But God says, no, 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 buttercup. I want you to wake up. I want you to get back to that gym before the rush goes in February. I want you to go ahead and start and finish that paper, that doctorate that I put my business out there. See, I'm matter of fact, today I'm checking after service. Don't run for me when I come for you, all right? Don't don't run for me when I come for you and ask you, what is that thing that you're supposed to be finishing before the, stri the clock, clock strikes 12 on the 31st of December this year? Because God spoke it to you a couple weeks ago, right? We got to make sure that we're doing something in this last season of the year. You got four months. You might as well get started. We're only three days into September. I don't know how we got here, but we might as well deal with it. Amen. Somebody say deal with it. Deal with it. Go. So we're in our seven up series. Somebody say seven up. Which is living life fully engaged. And I told you I will not be going back. So if you want to get a recap, I suggest that you go back to our Agape Church underscore Love Like Him YouTube channel and see the first two sequences. But so far within this series, we talked about show up. Somebody say show up. Show up. The, uh, uh, oh, uh. <sighs> come on, Nana. You already, Nana's already there. Nana and Papa says they know. Listen, Pastor V's going to come out the gate about a 12. If it's Celebration Sunday, he might be at a 15 April. So if I say, say something and you don't say something back, okay. For our new folks, like Sheldon, Kim, look, give God praise and shut. They look so good. Soldier in the United States Army. Yes, sir. We got some veterans here. Where's my veterans at? Are oh, you surrounded on all sides? You're a good company, brother. Not to mention you're in Shirley. That's right. Anyway, but if we don't participate, that's right. That's the culture up in here. Right? So somebody say, show up. show up. That's what I'm talking about. Say it with your chest or your belly button. The power of presence. There's a power within your presence. Don't you know when you show up, everything should be well? No, not me, Pastor. Yes, you. When you walk in the room, something should happen. Atmosphere should shift. Ooh. Let me get off this. I'm just supposed to be telling you the title, but that's where we came from. I, I, I'm seriously submitting to you. You should go back and listen to that message. The power of your presence. Then we talked about link up last week. Link up. Somebody say link up. link up. The value of relationships. Now I'll give you a few nuggets from that since it was just last week, right? We talked about relationships as opposed to relationship. 
Some of us are in a redundant, recycling version of what we think is a real relationship, but we're not. We're just in a relationship, right? And God says he wants you to have a real, prosperous, fruitful relationship. Who wants a real relationship? Who's in a real relationship? You got the chance to see some relationships up here this morning before you, right? Married 36 summers. Ooh, she barely looked 36. See, that's what marriage will do for you. Listen, young folks, if you get married, it's good for your health, okay? Right. Man and Papa, how many years? 60 years! Yeah. 60 years! That marriage knows more about, man, goodness gracious, the things that thing is saying, 60. Oh, come on. Yeah, whoo, that's what I'm talking about. That's a real relationship. That's a real relationship, all right? So we then we talked about this because, see, a real relationship should have affection in it, right? Which makes an emotional effect on you. But if it's not affectionate or have affection in it, then it may be an infection instead. Uh -oh. That's right. You got to wonder what happened and why your relationship got toxic in the first place because they might have an infection where you thought there was affection. Don't, I'm not repreaching that. Go see that. That's online. Go see that, right? But then also, Jesus told us that, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. See, back there, back in that day, they, they caught fish in nets. They didn't catch them with hooks and reels like we do today. So essentially what he was telling us from then, then and there to here and now, that he wants us to be net workers. Amen? And then we, we read a quote at the end that says, your network makes up your net worth. Who are you hanging with? Who are you kicking it with? Okay. Oh, I'm living good and looking good because of who I hang with every day. Y'all right. seen her running around here with that big sombrero on, praising the Lord, okay? She's like that every day, by the way, okay? Every day. I don't talk outside of this moment at the week, but she's talking enough for both of us, right? But every day. Is she like that all the time? Like those messages you ladies get from her? She's so sweet. She does that all the time. She's just sparkling sunshine, sparkling sunshine, glitter, sunshine, butterfly. All the time. But, but Rams, listen to me. It makes me better. Yeah. I'd be a, a vintage Oscar the Grouch in the garbage can and all, Jason, if it wasn't for her. So I'm thankful for her glitter, pixie dust, special butterfly magic. <laughs> Sheldon know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? I, you need it in your life. It's your network makes up your network. But let's, let's get down into it, right? Because check this out. We're talking about speak up today, the influential power of your voice. Say of my voice. Not, not talking about my voice tonight and today, because guess what? I have the microphone on. Surely it's amplified, but there's power in our voice. Say in my voice. That's right. Check this out. There's a bird who's getting ready to fly south. Go figure. We're getting ready to come into that season. It seems like fall is actually creeping up in here really quickly, killing trees and everything already. Right? The grass is having a moment this summer. Now all of a sudden it's brown. But the point is, there's a bird getting ready to fly south for the winter. He decides that he gets separated from the group. He doesn't want to dispatch when they take off, Jason. So now he's going to fly by himself. Don't go by yourself. Stay with the pack. There's a, uh, yeah, I don't have time to break that down. Anyway, so he takes off, and he leaves at the wrong time, and it's overnight, and he freezes. His wings freeze up, and he crashes and burns right into a barn and right into a, uh, a pile of hay. So he's down there, and he's starting to figure out how he's going to freeze. He's freezing, and he's shivering. And all of a sudden, here comes a cow, and he's like, what is this cow doing? And as you can imagine, what cows do if they're not eating? What do they think? They're eating, or they... You know. So now next thing you know, boom, he drops a, a warm, uh, um, you know what it is, right, on him. And then the bird starts to defrost. He's like, oh, oh, I'm so warm. This is nice, right? And, of course, he does, he's not saying these words, but he's chirping. He's chirping. He's chirping. And then all of a sudden, here comes this cat. And the cat starts licking all the stuff off him. And it, yeah, right? Exactly. But cats, that's why you don't kiss cats. Anyway, but then... <laughs> So the cat starts, and all of a sudden goes to go to bite his head off. And he's like, wait, wait, wait get off of me, right? And here's, <laughs> so ultimately, here's the deal, right? The cat gets him in the end. But here's the deal. Not everybody who poops on you is looking to really mess, mess around. Not, not everybody who poops on you is a problem in your life. Not everybody who helps you, like the cat, is really there to be your homie, right? But then there's times when you need to speak up, and then there's times when you need to shut up. That's the principle of that story. This is not the time to shut up, though, right? Because here's the other illustration why she's not here, sitting here, being here, being my warden. I'm loose and I'm off the chain. And here we go. Because guess what I'm saying? This is my lovely illustration about how the devil always puts us in the trunk and duct takes us. That's right. We're living in a special episode of our own SVU. Dum -dum. Right? If you haven't seen SVU, fix your life up. Get, get at least a couple episodes under the belt. Go home and binge it. Right? 
Livy and Benson is the good. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, a lot of us act like we don't know the way out of the trunk. We don't know that we're powerful beyond measure. We don't know that there's victory in our voice. And instead, we just allow the enemy to put this sticky duct tape over our mouth and make us to be quiet. Get out the trunk. Unbind yourself. Get free and speak out and speak up. Somebody say speak up. Speak up. So it's not enough for us to show up. It's not enough for us to link up. We got to speak up. Say speak up. That's right. So we're talking about the influential power of your voice. And as in weeks past, each one of our ups come with a personal reflection question and a practical application. So here's your reflection question. I want you to ask yourself right now and ask yourself throughout the week so you can take personal inventory and stop. Right now, I know Marquise and, 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 and Savannah, y'all like, man, this dude is flying. Right. Listen, just stick with me. Buckle in. It's going to be all right. And then you can watch it back later on. It's, it's good to second go around. Y'all like leftovers. Marquise, you look like a leftover guy. Like I like I like to eat pizza like all. Uh, anyway, it's good afterwards and again when you reheat it, right? So reflection question. How often have you been given feedback or shared? How often have you given feedback or shared an idea in any setting or audience in the last three months? Are you that one in the office when they go around the horn and ask a question? You ain't got nothing to say. But as soon as you get out the meeting. Y'all know what it is. Got all kinds of stuff to talk cash money out there in the meeting, right? By the water cooler, in the parking lot, on your 15,000 smoke breaks you're taking during the day. Did he say smoke breaks? I know you still smoking. Stop lying in church. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, you ain't had nothing to say in the meeting. But when we get in the break room, we got all kinds of stuff to say, right? Right? Teachers, teachers lounge. What goes down in the teachers lounge, goodness gracious, you never get on progress report what they really say about your kid in the teachers lounge. Eldridge Kim is a teacher. Anyway, right? But how often you actually give feedback? Because check this out. If you would just speak out, all it takes is like a kernel of popcorn. You could be the one to heat up the whole room. Now everybody's got questions. Somebody's got to be the bold one. Somebody's got to be the, the non-scary one. Somebody's got to be fearless as opposed to fearful. Right? The only question or statement that's not made is the only stupid one that's truly not is the one that's not asked. And a lot of us don't want to ask the question because we don't want to be stupid. Or we don't want to sound that way, right? So there's fear. And fear doesn't come, it's not a tool or a device that comes out of the handy belt of the Lord. Fear is something that the enemy uses against you. So there's victory in your voice. It is victory, victory in my voice. There's power in your voice. So amongst the conspiracy of those sitting in silence, your, your, you opening your mouth will serve as a gunshot all of a sudden to awaken everybody. But will you allow God to use you in that capacity? Or are you just going to sit quiet? It's none of my business. But you're saying a whole lot after the fact on the phone to whoever listened to it. Yeah, I got nothing to do with it. You could have shaped the balance of the future forward moving progress of your organization, of your church, of your family. But you just sat in silence. You mad later on talking about I don't know why they acting like this because you didn't speak up and speak into it. Right. Matt, we celebrated marriage today. Husbands, y'all already know what it is. Oh, pastor, don't give us a ram lesson right now. The ladies are sitting here. They're listening. I don't care. Those are the best ones. Right? Because if I tell you in front of them, then they can tell you later. Y'all know what Pastor said, right? So here's the lesson, ladies. Don't be like that. Don't try to leverage me later, right? Just work with them. But this is the reality. If the ladies aren't following certain things, or, you know, why are we finding ourselves in this cycle? Because you didn't speak into it. You found yourself, and especially, guess what? We're up on it today. Opening week, we found ourselves occupationally deaf by the football game. She came to you with some heavy hitting stuff that you needed to speak into and you missed your moment because you was waiting on halftime. Don't miss the moment to speak up. Amen. Say speak up. Speak up. So here's the question. Right. Or the question continues on. It says, would people in this context say that your words are positive or affirming? Yes or no. Are you a negative Nancy? Or are you a positive Paul? Which one are you? Somebody in here's middle name is Nancy. And I, I'm sorry. I always stick negative on Nancy. But we were saying that since like our grandparents. Right. So are you a negative Nancy or are you a positive Paul? Which one are you? Positive Paul. Thank you. Right? You got to be positive. We got to speak up and say the right things. Because listen, you don't want to be known for the one, oh, here they come. They always got something negative to say. You don't want to be that one. All of a sudden, you're writing a new chapter on how to irritate people and lose friends. Didn't even know you was writing that next, that next verse, right? You don't want to be that one. As a Christian man and woman, you should be the light that people are drawn to. They don't push people away. Amen. So practical application this week should be to commit to speaking life and not death in every situation every day. Life and not death every situation every day. Say every day. Every day. 
to, ble- to, to speak up on blessings, not curses, to become unified in our faith, assembled in our vision as a church and in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And lastly, to be committed to speaking up and give voice to those who are weak and vulnerable and have no voice. We've got to be. How do you find yourself to be an advocate for anybody if you don't advocate for yourself? It's like into that thing in the airplane that you always hear me talk about, right? Put on your mask first, but we we quick to, to, to pipe up for somebody else. We quick to carry somebody else's dirty water and complain about it for somebody else. But would you do the same for you? Right? God says, listen, it's time to speak up in the right ways. And we got to look to his word and look to his wisdom and look to his way to find out what are those right ways for us to speak up. Again, somebody say, speak up. You know what? I'm going to read this really quickly because God gave it to me prophetically over coffee. And it's for somebody in this room. I'm persuaded. So let me read this. Y'all ready? Buckle in. Doesn't matter. Y'all going to hear it anyway. Today, I have been sent with a message for a person who has lost their voice and needs to speak up again. Today, I speak to the young man who had influence and respect, but something happened. And no longer you speak up or share your influence anymore because you lost your voice. To the young lady who has become introverted and isolated and afraid to speak because you were told your true story and were shut down, scolded and ignored. Uh, They didn't believe you. You lost your voice and you feel like you cannot speak up. To the person who is afraid to share your testimony at work because your mouth is known for the wrong, evil and vile things that you said. And you don't know how to speak and God uh, speak of God or for God because, you know, you have no Christian credibility. You don't have a voice any longer and are afraid to speak up. It goes on and says to the person who is guilt ridden because you want to speak up against cruelty and injustice, but afraid of being bullied by others and the powers that be. You lost your voice. To one who is like the spouse who does not dare to speak in their home because you get uh, reminded of your failure and you have lost anything to say or any decision or any direction at home because you lost your voice. Today, in the name of Jesus, my hope is that you will regain your voice and influence again. Today, you will be able to speak up. Somebody say speak up. To speak the gospel of Christ into the lives of your family and community. To speak up on behalf of those who are being ill-treated. To speak up to the powers of darkness and drive them away. To speak to your own soul when it's out of control and you're downcast and beaten. Let's today talk about you speaking up. Speak up. Come on, let's give God praise for that. And if you were on that list or you were close to that list or you're around that list or maybe not even on that list, God still desires for you to speak up. To speak up, to know the power in your voice. Some of you will be healed of wounds that shut you down today. And some of you will renounce the lies that have been taking you off course. Because some of us have put those things into recycle. Right? Some of us in the older days heard that we weren't going to be spit. Now, listen, that ain't the word. and I'm not going to say it in church, right? I ain't Peter. <laughs> I have Peter tendencies, but I ain't going to do what Peter did. Right? But the reality is some of us heard it. And then we get to rehearsing that. Some of us got hurt and then we continue to say, you hurt me. So guess what you have? You have what you say. That person hurt you. But if you would forgive them and you would earnestly say it from the from the contrite and the conviction of your heart, I forgive you. Even if you say the words to them or not, guess what? You're now free and you're no longer bond. You have what you say. Anybody ever heard that saying before? Right. That's where our opening text from Proverbs 18 and 21 came from. You have what you say. That's where it came from, that you have the fruit of what it is that you say. We must understand that we are created in God's image. Genesis 1 and 27 says, so God created man in his own image In the image of God. He created him male and female. He created them. And guess what? When he created us, he gave us the power to speak. Angels only say what God tells them to. Animals don't talk, regardless of what what uh, cartoons you look at with your kids. They don't talk. All right. We do know our dogs don't talk to us, right? If they do, see me after church, right? But the reality is, animals don't, they communicate, April, in their own way. We were together for a minute. There's always, it's okay. We, everybody smile at April real quick. Next week, this week, your dog's going to be like, hey, it's time to eat fresh treat. April said so. Hey, anyway, right? So we speak because God created us in his image to speak. But why don't we do it like God did? Amen. And then over in Genesis 1 and 3, we know when it came to pass because it says, and then God said, let there be light. And there was light. There's the very first bar that Jesus or God spat in the Bible. Right. So then his son who sent us to who was sent to earth for us in Matthew 21 and 21, he goes even further and talks about that cursing and blessing and the capability and the power that's up in our mouth about being able to build up or be able to destroy things. And Jesus says, surely I say to you, if you have faith 
and do not doubt, you will not only do what, what, uh, what was done to the fig tree, which is what he cursed the fig tree. You can curse those things that God hates. You can say against those things. You can bind those things that God doesn't want to be loose in your life. You have that capability of power where Jesus says this, but you can also say to that mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. Right. The ladies encourage you this morning during praise and worship about those mountains in your life. Realistically, if you're working within the power of what your voice is doing in your life and you speak to that thing, you'll realize it's not a mountain, it's a molehill anyway. You have what you say. But we got to speak up and we got to be putting those right things in our mouth, right? Uh, milk does a body good. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. Guess what? Whatever you put in is what you're going to spit out, right? Jesus said to the Pharisees and Sadducees, it's not what you ingest that, that does bad to the body, it's what comes out of you that defiles you. Because whatever's in you abundantly is going to come out of you eventually. Right? I mean, that's what I'm telling you. This is why I got to make sure I'm straight all week long, Pop. Right? Avoiding Peter, trying to be more like Paul. A lot of times I get up here, y'all wonder, man, he's going so fast. And sometimes he says stuff that's like right there. I wonder, did, did he curse? And I missed it. He was talking too fast. Trust me, I play back the tape and I try to find out myself. No. Some Sundays I feel like I'm almost there. Right? But I want to make sure. Now, here's the byproduct. What's the byproduct? I make sure all week long I'm not rehearsing those things. So when I get up here, there's no way, no how that's coming out. No way, no how. Because I'm not full of that. What I'm full of, and I am full of it. See, y'all think, oh, that's a bad term. No, no, no. I'm full of his word. That's right. Tip me over and pour me, and you're going to get nothing but word. That's it. That's what you're going to get, right? I'm full of it. Can you say the same? Are you full of it? Are you full of God's word, light, and love on the inside, right? We have the power of construction and destruction within the life, within your mouth. Power of construction and destruction. That's what it said over in Proverbs uh, that we opened up with this morning, right? And then also in Hebrews 11 uh, and, uh, 3, it says, By faith we understand that the world were formed or framed by the word of God, so that things which we are seen are not made of things which were visible. Essentially, God spoke everything that we see, everything that we are, to include you and me. He spoke it into existence. So that's proof that you can speak something different into existence. You can speak it. Say, I can speak it. So if you're running around and saying you're always doing this and you're always doing that, first of all, let's stop. Let's apply this lesson this week. Stop speaking in absolutes. If you, if you think about it right now, some of us can pick out three instances that you, you do that forever. It's always this way. It, it's never this. It's always that. Why are you speaking in absolutes? First of all, he's the God that was, that is, and that is to come. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You ain't even where God's hanging out at, right? He's eternity. You haven't even scratched it or seen it. Why are you talking in, 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 in absolutes? You can't say it in absolutes. That's, that's the first thing that we got to do to start speaking up and changing with the things that we said. A couple weeks back, we also talked about stop minimalizing your voice. Stop reducing the things that you said. I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to talk more like a Christian. If you're trying, you're lying. If you're trying, you're lying. Because real reality, right? That's what you say to your friends. Your friends come to check you, do a little chin check, check up on you. Hey, Pastor Vincent, how's that doctorate coming? Well, I've been trying to get past this title page. It's a title page, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm lying. Right? The reality is we got to be able to speak up. We got to be able to speak up. Say speak up. Speak up. Let me pour some gas on this. You must understand the power and the influence in your voice. The power and the influence. Say power, power. and influence in your voice. Right. Influence is defined as the capacity to have an effect on the character, development or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself. That's the influence. These teachers this week, starting this week and last week, are going to have an impactful influence on your children's lives. This is why you got to be praying for them. Amen. You got to be praying for these teachers because, Lord, let them be filled with something positive to say unto my child. Now, even if they're not a believer, God, let them say something positive, something edifying, something worthwhile to my child that will support the things that I'm saying. And then I'm speaking up into their lives at home. But don't let you be short. And that teacher's encouraging your child. And you come home, you ain't got nothing to say. Dad, look, I got a B plus on my report. This, that, and third. That's good, Billy. Go and give me my next beer. All right? Billy's like, what happened to my B, man? All right? I, listen, somebody has got a Billy situation going on. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Or whatever the case may be. Little Alice comes home and she wants to talk about how she climbed the rope just to the lower knot in gym class. And she wants to flex and show you her muscle. You better celebrate, Alice. Don't let somebody else celebrate your child other than you. Speak up. Say, speak up. Speak up. 
Because you have influence and you have power. There's somebody in this room, thank you, Holy Spirit, take a pause for the call, that thinks your voice is mute, it's void, it's little, it's impotent, it's without power. You don't need no microphone to speak life. You don't need a, a, a pulpit to speak out and to be a game changer in somebody's life. You could be the difference of somebody going home to punch their own clock or live another day. But will you speak up? Will you speak up? You have the words of life on the inside of you. Will you speak up? Somebody who's ready to quit and give up. Quit a job, leave, walk out on school, do whatever the case may be, but you have the encouragement on the inside of you to speak to them. And you're asking yourself, who am I? I'm asking you, who are you not to do? You got to know who you are. And you're of a peculiar bunch of priests. You're a, a, child, a child of God. You're a chosen one who's been elected and selected, anointed and appointed to speak up. Say speak up. Speak up. We got to speak up in the right way because we'll speak up for the negative stuff in a heartbeat. Did you hear what such and such happened? You see what Beyonce is doing now? Right? We'll speak up about everything else that's, life, that's not life giving or life bringing. Don't worry about it. They're going to bleep that part on YouTube later. You can't speak against Beyonce. Right? I didn't say anything about her. I'm just saying. We'll talk about that before we talk about what God is doing in your life. Beyonce ain't paid your bills. Beyonce ain't give you no breakthrough. Beyonce ain't heal your life. I don't care what that little religion that formed about her say, no, she ain't do none of that. It was Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. That's who did it. So that's what we should be talking about. Amen? Amen. Howard Thurman said, do not be silent. There is no limit to the power that may be released through you. Are we not looking for God to move in us, for us, and with us in 2023? There's no limit to the things that he'll say through you or for you. We have to speak the word only and not also. We said this on Wednesday night at Bible study. You should be there. Ding. Who watches Bible study? Don't worry. Good, 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 good. Go stars. Everybody. Thank you. But we have to speak the word only, not also. Pastor Vincent, what does that mean? Don't say what you want to say and then go try to spray God's word on it. That's like putting perfume on a pig. Is it going to work? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's not going to work, right? It, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, right? Somewhere in there, I believe the Lord says, and it supports my point of what I was telling you. That's wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> Yo, ah, hit the brakes. Don't do that, right? Speak the word only, not also, in addition to what it is. The centurion found in Matthew 8 and 8, he came to Jesus, who wasn't even a believer yet. He was a Roman. It wasn't even his time to come into the faith by God's grace and, and to meet the plan that Jesus I got sent for, but he knew this man could do something to change the course of what's happening in my house. And he went to him and he said, Lord, will you pray for my servant? And Jesus said, sure, let's go. Let's go. Matter of fact, I'm ready to do this thing right now. He says, no, this is not the time for that. I'm not even worthy of you coming underneath my roof, Jesus. He says, but if you would just speak the word, my servant will be healed. Do we realize as Christian men and women that we have that power? That somebody's calling you for you to speak the word into their life and you're just receiving their complaint and they're complaining and they're yammering and they're going on when you should just give them a moment and say, you know what, beloved, this is what we're going to do. You have the prayer on the inside of you. Well, I don't like the prayer. Then this is why you should be practicing your prayer. Because guess what? As soon as it's going to happen this week, don't look down. Don't worry about it. Can't, can't get out of it now. It's going to happen this week. So, all of you, not even some all all of you are going to get a call from a friend that needs encouragement and boogers on your finger. Lights on. I don't pray aloud. It's going to be this week. Guarantee you. I don't care if you mutter, sputter, putter through it. You better speak life. God, I'm speaking up now for such and such in the name of Jesus. God, your word says you might, have, you might only have one verse. You better work it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It fits. It's, all, it's a fit all situation. And guess what? It's an open book test, too. It's okay to open your Bible. They can't see you, right? Pray them stuff in the Bible, because that's what God's going to answer anyway. Somebody say, speak up. Speak up. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Kid being bullied on the playground. That's who quoted that. Who used to be that kid? I'm, let me put my hand down, because that wasn't me. I was the kid saying stuff. Because stuff was said about me. And one day the table turned, Reed, and it was like, Arr! game over now, right? Game over. That's right. Mom, 
y'all don't hear about my childhood middle school. It was cruel. This, needless to say, it was cruel. I wasn't always the cool specimen that stands before you, okay? All right? There's a picture with a high top fade and a lot of acne somewhere. It was no bueno. None, okay? Nevertheless, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie from the pit of hell because words do the most damage. If words can build the universe in which we live in, they can construct and destruct, then what more will they do to a person? My Angelou told us this. People may not remember what you said or what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Now, I've been punched in the face. Probably a bad way to start that next point, Apostle Terry, right? But all of us as men, unless you've been punched in the face before, you, you, you can sympathize. Come on, Detective Matthews, you know what it is. Took a couple over the years, okay? Look at Pop. He's a scrappy one. Right? He's bare knuckle brawler right here. Or, yeah, he'd do it. And we know Elders Kim might do a fight, right? But the thing that hurt worse years later was something somebody said to me. Not the punch in the face. It's something that you say that could change the course of somebody's life. Somebody's life. Say, I got to speak up. There could be either power in your mouth or punishment in your mouth. There could be a compliment in your mouth or a complaint in your mouth. There could be life and light in your mouth or lifelessness and lies in your mouth. Which one's it going to be? Let's go over there. I got some note takers. There's either power or punishment in your mouth. Are you always torturing somebody with your words? Is it always vile? Is it always venomous? Because if so, then God doesn't want you to speak up. That's why you're not getting the prompting to say anything. You're just out there on an island saying what I want to say. And God's saying, stop speaking what you want to say and speak what I want to say. Right? Because check this out. Sweet water and bitter water can't flow from the same fountain. Don't sit up here talking about, blessed be the Lord. God bless you. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. This day the thirst is better on Sunday because it sounds good. And everybody's looking at me. And I see it. And on Monday, beep, 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 beep. You feel in the beeps. Oh, somebody's going to feel it. It's going to, Savelle's going to crush him this week. They're going to be like, Pastor said this. Right when you're firing out a good bomb. I'm not even going to give you a letter. Because somebody's thinking about one right now. As soon as you fire up the good one, you know that one. The one that you really like to say. The one that rumbles the jungle. The one that steals everybody in the house. That one, yeah. Now my kids will tell you, Tati, before I became a preacher. Woo! Jesus would be like, Dad, like, stop. It's heavy, man. But somebody's going to fire up a good one this week, and they're going to come back to this point. The Holy Spirit's going to remind you. You can't speak my blessings and those kind of words out your mouth and be a vessel for me to speak up. They speak up. Speak up. You can either have a compliment or a complaint. Right? I love it. Pastor Yvonne's really good at this. Instead of complaining about how long the line is like I do. Him on the line like, God, would they hurry up? The self-checkout. Listen, self-checkout ain't for everybody. It's not for everybody. Listen, please, Walmart, get some more people in there to help people, right? Please. Self-checkout is for certain people, right? And I'm in there just complaining. God, and it just, Lord, send an angel. Help somebody. I'm not even asking people, can I help you with that? Can I, paper or plastic, can I get you out of here, right? And Pastor Yvonne's looking for pretty, I like your hair. Girl, you wearing that dress. She's doing all of that. I'm like, aren't you angry about being in line right now? Nope, because I'm complimenting. I ain't complaining. Just pray for you, Pat. Stretch your hands forward. That's why I told y'all she's your favorite pastor. Don't think I'll be lying to you, right? She's the good one. If it wasn't for her, where would I be? <laughs> Whew. Man who finds a wife finds a good thing. Hello. All right. All right. I gotta get y'all out of here. Y'all having too much fun. Life for light or lifelessness and lies. That's what we give when we give our version and our sequence of events. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, a lot of times we think what we're saying is the truth, Chris, but the reality is it's not the truth, it's your truth. Right? And how about this? Your truth is half of a lie. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> Do you know why it's half a lie? Because it's only from your little three-pound brain. It's only from your little speck in the universe. It's not the full truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. God know the truth. So why are you lying? 
I got to tell Pastor Yvonne all the time, don't put no extra mustard on it. Just tell me how it is. Who's an embellisher in here? Don't worry about it. I'm just, I'm talking to you at home. It was, right, it was black and white. I went in, I got chicken, I came out, right? No, you should have seen it. I almost got hit in the parking lot, and I had to duck and tumble, and you wouldn't believe what happened at the cup. Did you get the chicken or not? You know what I'm saying? We didn't have to put all the extra mustard on it. Just, just tell it like it is. <laughs> life and light, lifelessness and lies. Then we got to speak the truth in love. <laughs> Y'all have to stop laughing in church. Then you got to speak the truth in love. The truth in love. This is why you need to know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because your truth ain't loving. It's not loving and it's not kind. Right? You got to speak the whole truth and nothing but the truth and speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4 and 4, 4 and 15 tells us about how we speak the truth in love. Matter of fact, we talked about that on Wednesday night instead. Right? We have to speak the truth in love. Write this formula down. It's not on the screens. The way that you speak the truth in love is this way. It's at the right time plus the right tone plus the right text slash testimony. Y'all didn't think we was doing math in church today. Real quick, right? There's going to be an extra credit exam after this. The right time, the right tone, the right text slash testimony equals truth and love. Because check this out. You telling somebody that's something that's completely wisdom filled and absolutely and utterly out of the Bible, but in the wrong time, it's still wrong. It's not in love. I mean, it says the just man will fall down seven times to get back up. You don't need to tell him while he's down. Right? Like you absolutely botched that. But the word says, I don't need to know it then. Be empathetic. Rub me on the butt a little bit. Tell me it's going to be all right. You know what I mean? Y'all know my testimony. Faith by fire. Working since I was 12, cutting grass, and all of a sudden, there's a good grown man after COVID. Hey, uh, Mr. Austin, come in here. Before my butt can hit the seat, you fired. What? Hey, oh, hold on. Bet you didn't know that's how I was going to get launched into full-time ministry, huh? Damn. Look at the Lord, what he can do. Right? But the fact of the matter is, did I call my wife, and she say, she lay on me, Chris? Ah, uh, you stink. Ah, you're terrible. No, she didn't go in on that. She encouraged me. She loved on me. Right? Made sure I didn't go back to the depressive valley of Oreos, which I just emerged from. Right? She said, stay here, come to the light. And then she ministered the word to me. Then gave me the prophetic. See, the time. She had a good, timely word for me. But then she said it in the right tone. Right? Because guess what? If you just gruff and growl and you say, if I got up here and delivered every week's message, like, come on, you can do it in the Lord. Ha! Right? And I said all of that to y'all. Somebody just came from that church this week. Anyway, and I did all of that to y'all. You're not going to remember the title of this message. You're not going to remember any of these verses. You're going to be like, why is he barking at me? I'm not going back to the church. Apostle Terry, I don't care how many championship belts you win, you can count me out on the next go around. Okay? Chris, you're winning today. They're having a good time, all right? But the reality is this. you got to have the right time, the right tone. The right tone. Even with your children, you'll get a better response from your children if you say it in the right tone. Say it calmly. Why are you freaking out? You're in charge. You in there losing your mind on your kids. Ah! <laughs> and Princeton and Kingston. Hey, look at April. <laughs> and then you want to know why mom, why my mom and papa got better juice than you? Because they come in. Come on, babies. Come on. Get away from the, get away from the crazy lady. You know what I'm saying? Because you in there losing your mind. I'm going to take you to church and give you the pastor because pastor going to talk to you all right. Come on, baby. It's all right. Okay? Say it in love. They deserve your love the most. Imagine if we got spoken to in love. You wouldn't be need to be taught about it right now. At 30, 40, 50, 60, sitting right here. I was 30 living in my car before I figured out how to speak to somebody in love because nobody spoke to me in love. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Say, speak up. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Right? Proverbs 27, 5 through 6. Put on some music. That way they know I'm not lying. We get out of here. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Oh, that's my question. Hold on. I got to go to my question first. If you don't share God's truth and love with the one who needs it, do you really love them? Do you really love them? We ask another question similar to that in the house. How much do you have to really hate somebody to let them go to hell? All you had to do was take out that fire with this guy with all 32 teeth out and say, come, come to church. 
and run the risk that they might meet Jesus for themselves. Gamble and have a hazardous, faithful moment to say they may come and have a collision course with faith. So how much did you have to hate them to just let them pass you by? So in the same facet, in the same movement, in the same moment, how much, or if you don't share God's truth and love with one who needs it, do you really truly love them? Turn that down, beloved, a little bit. Proverbs 27, 5 through 6 says this, an open rebuke is better than hidden love. That's right, to get it openly, to get chastised openly is better. Oh, we're going to talk about grow up. It's the next one. You don't want to miss it. And where Jesus, where God himself says, listen, if I can't chastise you, you're not my child. Oh, oh. Woo. an open rebuke is better than hidden love. Because see, people whisper to you and tell you all kinds of sweet things, but then be out there in the street talking bad about you. When they should have just told you openly, this is where your slip is hanging. You're out there flapping in the wind. Right? Because th that's the reality. I love you enough to tell you the truth. That's truth and love. I love you enough. I'm willing to risk the biscuit in our friendship to tell you how much I love you by telling you you're missing it. You're missing it. And a lot of times in this super sensitive, secular, sinful society that we live in, we won't speak up when somebody is going to change and save somebody's life. It goes on and says, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. I ain't talking about just an associate or an acquaintance. I'm talking about a real friend. I'm talking about down like four flat tires, together like spinal cords and car seats, bought my first ice cream, walked the extra mile with me. We share a toothbrush kind of friend. No. Hey, I got a friend like that, okay? You got a friend. Anyway, I'm talking <laughs> Real friends will give you a two, bro. <laughs> Bring it back into perspective. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus said, greater love will a man have for another when he lays down his life for a friend. Those are your friends. Will they lay down their life for you? So does it have to be literal? I've laid down my life for several of my friends and offered it up as a sacrifice in combat. Yes, it's, it's literal. And is it one extent? The other extent is, will you stop the time of your life to give some of your valuable time to somebody? This is why you shouldn't be wasting time. If you want, if you want to perfect one more thing at the, before the end of 2023, no more wasted lunches. Stop taking things that are going to waste your time. Your time is your most valuable commodity and gift. It's the, first, it's the best thing you got, Marquise. Don't just give it to nobody just because they asked for it. It's okay to tell people no. Guess what? No. How, how about this? Speak up with a no. Matter of fact, let's practice it. Turn your belly button. Say no. 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 Exactly. Because, see, learning how to speak up right is about understanding the misplaced yeses and the anointed no. The misplaced yeses and the anointed no. It's a whole message, Lewis. Lewis, all, all on itself. The misplaced yeses and the anointed no. Matter of fact, those who are taking notes, try to spell anointing without no. No is anointed. The word is actually anointed. It's in the middle of anointing. And you are anointed by the Holy Spirit to tell somebody, no. No, you can't have my time. No, I'm not going to listen to you dump your drama on me. No, I can't do this for you because I'm spread too thin already. No. I won't go with you someplace else to some festival, some carnival, some concert, and not go to church first. No. A person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. We got people out here living with a belly full of lies, but willing to squeeze in some truth if you would share it with them. Amen? Speak up. These are the takeaways as we go. Number one. The words have, your words have incredible power. Your words have incredible power. Say power. power. Your words can bring blessings or curses unto somebody, uh, unto your own life. And whatever you speak is what you have. You can literally turn yourself, your situation around. I showed up in here this morning with a bad will. My wife reminded me, she said, hey, you're going to have what you're going to say. You're going to sit up there and you're going to get in front of the people. Or you're going to walk and stroll as smooth like you do. I said, I'm healed in Jesus thing. Back. Y'all didn't even know until I just told you, right? Right? So here it is. Are you healed or are you not? Are you blessed or are you not? 
Are you breaking through or are you not? Is your marriage on the rocks or is it not? You say it. Whatever you say is what it's going to be. We, we breaking up. Then you are. We're not. I'm not going anywhere. Right? I told my wife, I said, sister, you better lock in for the long haul. We're going to have one there a pop-up guy. You got at least another 80 years with me. You better lock in. Well, I don't like what you do. You better, you better figure it out. Because we stuck in this thing, right? There's no out. There's no exit door. New couple, been married three weeks. No exit. Give God praise for that. Three weeks. Boom. No exit. No exit's here, baby. That's right. You better... You better buckle in. It's a long haul, right? But you, your words can bring blessings or curses unto you. Whatever you have is what you whatever you say is what you'll have. Remember that this week. Whatever you say is what you'll have. Your words reflect your spiritual maturity. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Let somebody talk long enough. You'll hear everything that you need to hear. Let somebody. Oh, I'm giving you some free wisdom nuggets here in the end. I, I know we're supposed to be going by now. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Baptist preacher. Today is my fifth close, but hear what I got to say, right? Let somebody talk long enough, Ms. Emily, and they'll tell you everything you're looking to hear. How about this? How about this one? Whatever somebody tells you at face value, believe them. Believe them. Why are we running around doing this idiosyncrasy called I give them the benefit of the doubt? Did you just hear what I said? There's no benefit in the doubt. If they said something that's worthy of doubting it, believe them. Doubt that. And don't spend no more time with them. <laughs> is it good to you thinking this right? Yes. I, I, I doubt what they say is 50-50, but you know what? I'll give it another round. No, I'm not going to hang out with no liar again. I got other things to do with my time. You know what I'm saying? Every time I come in contact with old Curtis, man, I hope there's old Curtis in here. Hey, Curtis, I ain't talking bad about you. I'm just using you for this illustration, right? The Tyrone. No, there's definitely Tyrone out there. But Curtis, <laughs> Curtis always put in some extra mustard on things, man. Curtis, why the fish always this big? You ain't even been fishing before. <laughs> but the fish was this big? Curtis. <laughs> Curtis, you really know where the Loch Ness Monster is at, really? Your words reflect spiritual maturity. James 3 and 2. Can I give you... It says, for we stumble in many things. And if anyone does not stumble in word, he or she is perfect or made mature man, able also to bridle the whole body. Which means that, check this out, you'll be able to control your soul. You'll be able to show some temperance and some self-restraint by the things that you speak and say. I realized I stopped saying stupid stuff one day when I was finally good and grown in the Lord. But up until that point, Pop, oh, it was bad. Four, your words reflect your heart. Whatever's in you abundantly is going to come out of you eventually. Luke 64, 6 and 45 says, A good person produces good things from a treasure of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What's in your heart? The B portion says, What you say flows from what's in your heart. <clears throat> Another portion that James says, For our married couples and friends and brothers and sisters and everybody else, when you're in a fight, James tells us the quarreling comes from within you. So next time you rip it off and you're getting ready to merge in, and I got to give you a piece of my mind. Here's another wisdom nugget. Stop giving out pieces of your mind. You ain't got so much to give out anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know I'm working about just with a little bit. And I got to hold on to it to come up here and give it to you every Sunday, okay? I ain't out there giving people. Somebody honked at me yesterday driving a church truck. Coming to church to set up for the Lord. Oh boy! <laughs> and then they caught the light. They caught the light, Jay. And I had the right turn. And I pulled up, and I looked out the window. I rolled the window down. Right, the window wasn't down. I don't know what they think this piece of glass between me is going to do. In the U-Haul, man. Right. God bless you. Have a great day. Totally confused. Totally confuzzled them. They was like, because they were looking for a fight. The old Vincent would have been looking for a fight too. <laughs> but she was looking at the X Men. That's right. <laughs> Give God praise for the X Men, right? <laughs> Number five, people can get set free through your words. People can get set free through your words. I do not look low, light, or little. 
upon your decision that you would submit to this broken, bad, just wimpy, weak, dirty vessel every single week. You're like, man, why are you talking yourself like this? Because I know I'm imperfect, but I'm preaching a perfect message. I'm, pre I'm preaching about a perfect Jesus, and I'm okay with saying that. And you submit yourself to come and hear his word through my words every single week. That's not something small. And so, therefore, five means something to me. My, my words that God gives me to stand here before you, holding this clicker, running around, getting sweaty, making jokes and laughing. I do not think low light a little bit because it's the words that's going to get you free. Because guess what? Somebody did that for me 14 years ago. Preached himself sweaty in front of me four weeks in a row till I got saved. And that's my bishop and my father in the faith today. Let's give God praise because somebody in this room reaffirmed their faith today. Somebody there at home got saved today. And we give God praise for you today. Hey, family, get ready for and strap up because it's going to be a victorious week this week. God is going to blow your mind. Make sure that you're ready and inclined to speak up this week because he's going to use you. Who wants to be used by the Lord to speak up this week? That's what I'm talking about. Let's give God praise. Be kind of one to remember to love like him. We'll see you then on Wednesday night, 707. God bless you. Ready to give. Say yeah. Agape Church, it's tithes and offering time. Agape family and friends, great news. There are three ways that you can give cheerfully in the house of God. We encourage you to partner with us to advance God's kingdom to go further and farther into many people's lives. The first way you can give is number one, give by phone through Cash App, dollar sign, love like him. Number two, give at www.lovelikehim.today. Click on the donate button and follow the prompts there. Lastly, number three, you can mail in your charitable givings to 345 Green Street, Havita -a Grace, Maryland, 21078. Agape Church would like to thank you for your charitable giving today, and we pray that the Lord will shower you with his choice blessings. Thank you for joining and participating in our Agape Church Sunday morning expectation service virtually. We're so blessed that you chose to tune in. We pray and believe with expectation that you received a word from God for your life today with revelation unto your transformation. If today's word inspired you in a special way, we would love to hear from you. You can connect and reach us by phone or email. Text Need Prayer, New Member, One Info, 2443-640-7491. You can also reach us via email, prayer, member, or info at lovelikehim.today. We look forward to connecting with you real soon. God bless you and have a great Sunday. And remember always to love like Him.